My video is entitled Fission and Fusion, and of course I'm going to go over the basic differences between fission and fusion, what each of those are. Uh, here is a diagram I just put in the front of this uh, slide. This is actually a fission reaction. You can see here, here's a nucleus of an atom. I believe the protons are red and the neutrons are white. Here's another neutron. It comes in, gets attached to this nucleus, and when that happens, this nucleus becomes unstable, and it splits into two smaller nuclei and releases more, pro, excuse me, more neutrons and some energy. This is actually a fission reaction, and this is what occurs uh, when we... Uh, make energy in a nuclear power plant, or how we make energy or get energy from a nuclear power plant, and also how we make atom bombs. This could be a, a, a uranium atom, for example, and I'll cover that in a little more detail in a few moments. All right, so here is fission and fusion. Both these are nuclear reactions. That means they involve changing the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. This is different than chemical reactions. Chemical reactions, as you'll remember, involve the electrons, and the sharing and the transfer of electrons from one atom to another, they don't involve changing the actual elements that are involved in the chemical reaction. In a nuclear reaction, we're actually going to change the, we, we can change the actual elements that we have. So chemical reactions, we break bonds, we make bonds, but we have the same elements. We started with the, um, with the uh, reactants and the products, but in a and we're just recombining those to make new compounds, but in a nuclear reaction, we actually get different elements out of that process. Okay, a little review. Uh, protons and neutrons are both called nucleons, and they're called nucleons because they're in the nucleus of the atom. That seems to make a lot of sense. And you'll remember that the number of protons determines the type of element. All atoms of a given element have the same number of protons in their nucleus. For example, all calcium atoms have 20 protons in their nucleus, and all uranium atoms have 92, and so on and so on. Okay, but we do have the neutrons in there, and what do the neutrons do? Well, they help to hold the protons together. They help with the strong nuclear force. As you know, the protons are positively charged, and the closer they get, because they have a similar charge, the harder they push away from each other using the electromagnetic force, but the neutrons are in there to help mediate the strong nuclear force, which we'll talk about in just a moment, and they help to hold the nucleus of an atom together. All right, so before we talk about fission and fusion, let's just go over the strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force is what binds the protons together, and as I said earlier, the neutrons help to mediate that force between the protons. Strong nuclear force is the strongest of the forces. It's stronger than the electromagnetic force. It's stronger than the weak force. It's stronger than gravity. But the problem is, or the thing about it is, is it acts over very short distances. So in order to get the protons together and to get the protons to stick together, we have to bring them very close together. And that requires a lot of energy to do that. But if we can get them close enough together, then the strong nuclear force will take over and those protons will actually stick together. So it's very strong, so it's called the strong nuclear force, but it acts over very short distances uh, on the order of the size of an atomic nucleus. Okay, so as the number of protons increases, as we go up the atomic numbers on the periodic table, we have to also increase the number of neutrons, and as we increase the number of protons and neutrons, then the atomic nuclei get more and more unstable because they get bigger and bigger and the strong nuclear force has a harder time holding them together. And once we get above element 82, which is lead, lead is considered to be a, st a stable element, when we get to number element number 83, with atomic number 83, then those are the elements 83 and above that are we consider to be unstable, and they tend to break apart, split apart, and decay radioactively. All right, so that's the strong nuclear force. Strong, short distances, holds the protons together. All right, here's fission. Fission is the splitting of an atom into smaller, the splitting of the nucleus of an atom into smaller nuclei. This will often produce additional neutrons, which can go on and do further fission reactions, and therefore we get like a chain reaction, which we have in an atomic bomb. We have a controlled reaction in a nuclear power plant because we don't want the whole thing to explode. And that's an exothermic process, so we get energy out of it. Here's the energy that we get out of it certain number of uh, mega electron volts, volts usually. And this is what we use in nuclear power plants to make power. 
to boil water to turn turbines to get electricity, and we also use that in weapons when we want to have a large uncontrolled explosion. And here's just a diagram of it. Here's uranium-235. It's uh, a stable element, but if we put another nucleus, excuse me, another neutron in, into that nucleus, then it becomes uranium-236, and it becomes unstable, so we call this fissile material, it becomes unstable, and when it splits apart into, say, like a krypton and a barium atom, nuclei, so we get two separate different elements because it's a nuclear reaction and it's splitting apart, we also get some additional neutrons, which can then go on and do further fission reactions with other uh, nuclei or other atoms of uranium-235. So that's fission. It's the splitting into smaller nuclei and the release of energy. Fission splitting. All right, the other one sounds like it makes a little more sense. This is fusion, and fusion is when we fuse things together and we join them together to make a heavier nucleus. So fusion, nuclei are joined together to form a heavier nucleus. This also can absorb but often releases energy. The problem with this one is if you wanted to make a power plant that uses this, it requires lots of energy to get those two nuclei together. Here's a hydrogen nucleus, positive charge, hydrogen nucleus, positive charge. And when you bring them together, well, they don't want to be together because they have similar charges. And in order to get them close enough so that the strong nuclear force can take over, you have to use a lot of energy, a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and that requires a lot of energy to start with, which kind of makes this uh, unusable for nuclear power plants. But of course, people are trying to do that. So you join two hydrogen nuclei together, and you can do that, and you get a helium nucleus. This is what occurs in stars. Our sun is doing this constantly to get energy. It has a lot of mass, so it provides a lot of gravity and a lot of pressure, and you can fuse two hydrogen nuclei together to get a, or the sun can fuse two hydrogen nuclei together to get a helium nucleus, and you get a lot of energy out of that. And this is the energy that the sun gives off and provides us with the heat that we need to live. Eventually, the sun will use up all of its hydrogen and all of its helium, and it'll make heavier and heavier elements, and then it will actually burn out at some point, and it may even explode as it collapses in on itself when it's not giving off any more energy. And then it will make really heavy elements like 83 and above that are considered to be unstable. So this is fusion. It's the joining together of a, two nuclei to make a heavier nucleus. And fusion is bringing them together. And fission is splitting them apart into smaller nuclei.